He said, we should go straight to straight. This is why I call on the first of our members to see the summer to get to see the eight months haircut. Thank you, Mass Speaker. We say on the intermediate bench, the right to strike is outdated when an outdated uh, or concept in our society. Right to strike was made, for example, 100 years ago, when there is no labor law, or when there is no access to the media by, by, by employer, where there is no third party organization to solve its activity. But when we on this on the affirmative bench in the 21st century made legal norm to have to create a norm or create a norm to protect this focus, we, we say on this side of the half this right to strike is becoming excessive power to to to, to, to us worker in this situation. We think on this side of the house, this right to strike hurts the company and as a consequence that hurts the employers employees that empo employees as a consequence. We think this this level right to strike lost its own meaning. That's why that's why we stand on independence day. As a model, is we we have a serious simple model. In liberal democracies such as the Japan, in West America, or the first world nations, we we'll abolish right to strike, both in a public public uh, public show and both in a private sphere. We will abolish the both of them. We think if you, uh, other types of rights will be given to the, given to like the workers in public policy, like the right to, for, to for example, form these labor unions, or for example, the rights to, for example, have an access to the lawsuit so that they can sue the company's behaviors. We think this, this is the purely this debate is a purely about right to strike. Based on this model, I have two things to talk about. First, I want to tell you why right to strike harms the, harms the employee, harms the employee in the long run. And second, I want to tell you why our policy will provide the better places for the company. So first, about the problem in, in the current program. We think on this side of the house, when, they, when people have a right to strike, this harms the company in two ways. Firstly, it directly harms the company's profit in these situations. Why? Why, why is it? Because firstly, because this labor union can use, can, can use this right to strike as a threat, a threat in the negotiation table, between, negotiation table between the boss or between the boss of, of, of the company. Because it's, this, they can use it as a threat. Because if they, once they make a strike, it just means this big company, entire company cannot run well, which means the entire profit of the company will go, go down. But this company is fearing about the threat of the individual. That's why individual individual uses this right to strike as a threat. For example, they claim that they want to increase, for example, please increase the social welfare they can get, or please increase the amount of the salary company necessarily has to follow this individual in, in this instance. There are many case studies for, to prove that. Firstly, about the GMs in North America, when the when the workers has excessive amounts of power in this negotiation table and use it as a threat, it's necessarily the boss has to react with that. They increase the amount of social welfare. As a consequence, this GM has to be, go, get bankrupted because this entire money they, they they get they went red. Secondly, in Japan, this is the best example about the JAL, JAL. We think in this situation, because this entire workers uses this right to strike as a threat and increase the amount of selling, then necessarily follows this job has to be bailed out by the government in this instance. For example, when we the Greece, when we the Greece in workers claim the claim this right to strike in this instances. Necessarily in the 20 years, this amount of salary went soar up by 50% and, and, and reduce this amount of budget. We think that's problematic. We think this is the situation we are talking about in today's day. Why this is problematic? Because firstly, we when we point out this will lead to the loss of the loss of the loss of the company's property. Because if they have to use this this money, for example, to increase the amount of the social welfare, even if you you went rent, you went rent, that means you have, you reduce the amount of the benefit you, you have in this situation. If you have this default, we think this will necessarily hurt the, hurts the company's management in this situation. That means if company has to have layoff so that they will cut the most vulnerable workers in the, in this situation. For example, they cut the young workers or they cut most um, cut the most vulnerable workers in this situation. That means this worker will lose this job in this situation. But secondly, why this is problematic? It's because this we point out this structure of the labor union is not for the vulnerable workers, but the structure of the labor union is for elderly, Mr. Madam Speaker. But we point out this labor union has a hierarchical structure, structure Madam Speaker. You think because this in the 
Labor union includes, for example, 50 years elderly workers and 20 years young workers, let us speak. In this situation, what the, labor, what the structure of the labor union is, is that this is a hierarchical, and 50 years elderly guy can, can decide about their own labor union. But without hearing about, about the 20 years young workers, young workers switch. Why? Because there is a clear, clear structure of imbalance between, between the 50 years elderly guys and 20 years young, young workers. Because if 50 years elderly guys has a higher position in the company, they have higher higher position and higher power inside inside this company. That means young workers cannot stop by themselves about, about for example, to avoid the situation of being laid off in this situation. That means the government has necessarily has to intervene this situation. So they will abolish this right to strike in the in this situation. That's why we think on this that right to strike is permitting the company's management in the first place. But the second thing we point out, to be pointed out, company is leaving our country. Company is leaving our country and go to other and move it, their own company in other in other country. For example, in, if you talk about the context of the Europe, because it's, because it's in, in the West Europe, it, it, uh, in, the, in this situation, these people have overwhelming power or right to, right to strike, because it, that's why this company is moving from to the East Europe, or the way in Asia, it, the company is moving to the South, Southeast Asia. Why? Because if this company, if this worker has a, has a, has a, has a right to strike, it necessarily affects the government, company's budget, right? That means the company wants to go to the country where there is you know, the less, less regulation of the right to strike in this situation. We think this kind of problem happens if, it, if this, if this if the loss of the company in the other country happens, then that's problematic. Because if this company moves out, that means the entire entire pipe so that the people can share can share as as, a, as an access of the job we entirely lost. Which means if, if we think we think that's very problematic situation. That's why the government has necessity for us to intervene. Because if you once lose your, your little job, that's that has a huge impact in your life. You have no food, you have no water, or you have less amount of money for you to send your children in a better education and better medication. Think those kind of problems should be solved. Oh, secondly, why our policy provide, provide equal platform in, the, in, the, in, this, in this situation? We think on the side of the house, by taking this policy, if we if workers lose excessive power on the negotiation table, this will be equal power. Opposition might say that a company will have excessive power. We don't think that we don't think that's necessarily true. Lastly, this is because we think in the current framework there's a labor law, right? Which means if the company for the fire individual without any reasonable reason, which means this 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 this, this worker can can have a lawsuit. To, to lose closer toward, toward the company. The company necessarily has to, that decision making about the firing individual will be invalid in this situation. We think that's, that's good. And second, we there is a third party organization in, 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 certain, in certain community which, 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 which regulates companies' act, actions for the firing a hiring individual. The third one points out there is access to the media, access to the media, speaker, but, but speaker, by workers. What do we mean by that? Because if this, there is a problematic stretch for you, there is an exploitation by the, by, by, by the company, there is sexual harassment. Inside inside a company, what these individuals can do, when the individuals can claim it, claim it to the news 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 media, and media can probably report it, Madam Speaker. The the news entire society knows that this company is having a human expression. We think this is this is a huge threat for the company. Because firstly, this will reduce this reduce it reduce next like human capital, right? Because if they, if they, if you talk about a new or the new graduates of the university. If you, if you know the fact this company is having human exposition, then necessarily there's a choice these the students will have that if you have other, other choices and go to another company, then this company wants to stop that. But secondly, if this whole consumer in liberal democracy knows the fact this company is exposing the fact, then this will decrease the amount of repetitions this company is out. Yes, a boy, the, the, the company, people will be have, will be boycott buying buying this product. That's why that's what we see in the Nike instances, when the people know the fact Nike exploited the human human being, the entire citizen in the democracy stop buying these Nike goods. We think this will attack this attack attack the profit of the com company can get. So Mr. Speaker, because we think this right to strike is outdated with their words.
again, Madam Speaker. So today, uh, we believe that uh, the right of strike is really necessary to maintain power between companies and employees. And there is no other good method for workers to get good cognition uh, except for this right of strike. And however, I think in this proposal, government are just violating workers' rights and it will not only harm to the workers themselves and also it is harm to society themselves because if it is caused harm to workers, then it will uh, spread to the society. So that is our stance. So before that, uh, I'd like to rebut the previous speaker said. Firstly, uh, uh, they mentioned some alternative way of strike. Firstly, labor law work. But uh, it's not true because labor law is not perfect. Uh, because, for example, I mean, uh, uh, for example, um, uh, because in the first place, if labor law completely work on the status quo, what is the incentive for uh, current people during strike, Madam Speaker? That is clear evidence that uh, happening strike is clear evidence that this current labor law is not working at all. Uh, working, and also they say that. Like, how about saying media or so forth? But uh, it's not true because, uh, for example, company and the media will, will when the media listen to individual people or or rather the a huge amount of group. And um, of course, media will focus on the group because media will see that it is really a huge problem if if, uh, if number of numbers of people say uh, say it's loud. And also, um, and also they say uh, like low suits is an uh, alternative way, but it's not true because low suits takes longer time and it is really ris risky when when you lose the suit because you uh, cannot work for a long time and you cannot earn money for that term and also you might uh, be a possibility to lose a position, right? So it so. That's why lawsuits cannot be an alternative way. And also they say, after taking this proposal, uh, under status quo, the profit is really a uh, disappearing. But uh, firstly, it is to logical jumping, Madam Speaker, because that's because uh, you they do one, one day strike of shopping uh, train. Uh, that's not like uh, lead a bankrupt, bankrupt of a company or, or like uh, so forth. And also say, uh, we say, uh, rather, uh, after taking this proposal, company will hold huge amount of uh, risk because uh, there will be a worse the condition of workers. Therefore, so I will explain the uh, concrete harm of after taking this proposal. So moving on to, uh, firstly, in principle, why strike is really essential and what, what kind of rights they have. Uh, under status quo, the strike is only way of voice that to enhance voice of opinion as a united group, Madam Speaker, and oh, and then it, it is uh, really effective because for in the first level, company hear what worker is saying because company hear uh, if if workers do not work for uh, one week or two, two weeks, and also there is a criticism from the society because uh, this is a huge impact if. Uh, if poor bus or train does not move. So and in this process, the uh, strike is a really strong uh, uh, power and we believe that government have a role to ensure workers' rights because workers pay duty to the, com oh, to the government in two level. Firstly, the worker contributes to society by providing the necessary uh, work, for example, uh, moving, uh, make the train move, or do firefighter or medic pro uh, provide medical, uh, which is really essential for a citizen's life. And we, uh, we, we think uh, without this kind of job, government or society does not stand at all. And also, second level, they, workers are paying tax to the uh, to the government by working and uh, and therefore in these two level uh, the workers are uh, paying duty to the government therefore at the same time government should ensure that certain uh, workers rights so I will explain two kind of harm in first level is worker and second is society first harm is 
worker. Unless let us go, the worker's right is protected, but because we have a right of strike, because government change condition, for example, if company do not pay overtime pay, overtime fee, then after the strike, they will pay the uh, overtime pay. Or, um, or, may, or if company uh, lets worker work for eight or nine hours, which is really hard, hard and then uh, after the strike, and, uh, and if company neglects the labor law, then if, if workers do strike, they would uh, they will fix their working condition, and therefore uh, workers' right is really uh, protected. But after taking this proposal, what is happening is workers cannot strike. Therefore, workers is no way to speak up or try to change uh, or try to appeal to the society that these companies' condition is really bad. Therefore, what is happening is workers is really uh, violated. Why is it serious? Because uh, when work, workers do overwork, then they will be may, maybe depressed, or, and then they, uh, they will commit suicide, or maybe they will too tired, they get too tired, they, and they, they die. And maybe uh, when the company continues to pay really cheap income to workers, and then we uh, uh, continue to uh, sustain the unfair situation. Maybe the workers cannot spend their money to for the children's education or to or people's life. And therefore, uh, at the worker level, it is really pro 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 problematic. So, and second harm is the so harm to society. Under status quo, company can uh, can maintain good condition because of of the criticism of society or because of the uh, because of the company's uh, deterrence power by happened by the strike. And then company can maintain safety or a uh, good condition of and and we believe good condition uh, directly connect to the quality or safety of service. And however the thing this proposal company do not hear uh, and also, workers can not legally do strike, right? Therefore, a company neglect overworking, and then this is uh, really hard because uh, if company lets workers really do overwork, then, uh, for example, bus driver uh, will uh, cause a bus crash, and then it will kill uh, ten or twenty people. Maybe uh, the company do not fix the overtime structure, then maybe driver of train will uh, cause a crash and then it will cause uh, uh, 100 or 200 kill. And we believe that kind of harm is uh, really problematic in, in the wrong line, in the wrong time when we, uh, for the company and for the society and for the individual level. That is the reason why we, uh, we have to afford. Thank you. issues in my speech. Firstly, the necessity of strikes, and secondly, the effectiveness of strikes, and thirdly, I'm going to move on to my closing material adding why a strike is particularly pernicious and harmful when it comes to essential services such as, such as electricity, such, such as transportation, 
and those kind of industries. So firstly, the necessity of strikes. Now they said that labor law is oftentimes not enough, and therefore we need the right to strike. And their asserted reason was that, like, why would these people strike in the first place if the labor law, law was enough? Well, the reason why these people probably strike, strike is because the demand and the greed of a person is endless, right? The reason why, like, former employees of GM strike was not because they wanted to prevent, like, sexual harassment, or they wanted to prevent exploitation by the corporation of GM. It, it, it was simply because they wanted endless supply of medical and social welfare, Mrs. Ma Madam Speaker, we believe that's something problematic. The second response which they gave us was that media oftentimes is not, not enough because media probably don't have any incentive to report the claim of these employees. We don't think that's necessarily true. Media have a huge incentive to report, especially these cases of labor issue. And why is that? Because it gets high rating and high attention. And why is that, Madam Speaker? It's because people are especially attracted to these kind of labor issues and labor exploitation. And the simple reason is they themselves are employees. Speaker. So they do consider all these kind of uh, labor regulations and these kind of law. Therefore, generally, people have an interest in these kind of issues. Therefore, media have an interest to report these kind of cases. That is why, Madam Speaker, in Japan, in order to uh, legislate law regarding overworking, Madam Speaker, we didn't like it wasn't like one corporation striking against the uh, one it, like labor union striking against the corporation which created this legislation. It was the media reporting these kind of problems, and as a consequence of that, creating a legislation. So we so we don't think that strike is necessary in that field. The third response which they told us was that now after plan adoption, when corporations would simply start to exploit these kind of employees in the most uh, in the most problematic way. We don't think that that's realistic, Madam Speaker, because uh, if like these corporations like overly exploit these uh, employees, like like decrease their uh, salary significantly, or start start to like uh, impose these like severe work work on these kind of employees, that necessarily decreases the product pro productivity of that corporation because employees have necessarily have like like would have to overwork. But furthermore, Mr. Speaker, employees in the state of can choose different corporations like if these corporations like exploit these employees too much. So we don't think that this over exploitation is a realistic harm in this debate. Moving to the second issue, which is the effectiveness of strike. Now, the first thing that they told us is that when these employees strike, that oftentimes leads to like people and citizens criticizing the corporations instead of the labor union. We don't think that this is necessarily true, because when you strike, Madam Speaker, that means that necessarily harms the rest of the society, because when General Motors strikes, that necessarily harms these uh, people, uh, that necessarily harms people, Mr. Speaker, because now people will not be able to access the car of GM. When like certain like corporations which provide like certain essential services, right? Like people will not be able to access certain services. So as a consequence of that, by striking, you're necessarily harming the people. What is the consequence of that, Madam Speaker? The consequence is people become less supportive of that labor union because labor union are necessarily harming them. So instead of criticizing the corporation, like people will not start start uh, criticizing the labor union, and that's exactly what happened in the case of General Motors. Mr. Madam Speaker, when the, when the Labour Union of uh, General Motors decided to strike, oh, I'm sorry, when General Motors was bankrupt, like people didn't criticize General Motors, people started to criticize the Labour Union of General Motors because they were demanding ex excessive medical care and social welfare, and people, uh, people found that unreasonable. And that's why the consequence, we believe that strike oftentimes do, uh, do not lead to the support of Labour Union, actually leads to the criticism of Labour Union and the cause that they want to push. The second thing that they told us under um, under this issue was that like people can access like better, better uh, no, if if they uh, strike and if they demand more like uh, a better environment they can by striking people can access like better labor conditions and better labor environments such as better payment. Now we have a number of responses. The first response is that only benefits small number of people, which is at the top of the hierarchy of those labor union, Mr. Speaker, who oftentimes are at the management position of those kind of labor union, and oftentimes doesn't benefit the people at the ground who are actually working in the factory. But so the second response is that actually more people would receive, like even even if like small number of people might receive some benefit by like having better uh, labor environment or having better payment, it comes at the cost of harming like a lot of. Uh, uh, a lot of more people, because in order to provide better better salaries or like uh, better like social wel uh, social welfare or medical care, corporation necessarily has to cut cut costs in other area. So what is what what, what kind of costs are, are they going to necessarily uh, cut? For example, temporary workers, Madam Speaker. A lot of people in Japan, especially poor, uh, who are in poor and desperate situations, who, who have no other options, who have no other options in choice, oftentimes are employed in temporary worker. The first thing that these corporations are probably going to do is cut all of those temp uh, temporary workers in order to pay like extremely high sal salary 
for like a very small number of people who are at the top of the hierarchy of the labor union. We don't think that's necessarily fair. And we don't think that they only benefit a small number of people, rather in, instead harm a lot of people. So moving to my own substantive, which is why this harm, why, why harming in certain essential services is necessarily devastating. Now we say that in the status quo, in countries such as France, and in countries such as England, we still recognize the right to strikes in essential services. For example, in France, in 2008, the labor union of firefighters decided to strike in order to raise their pay. In England, labor, labor unions of British Airways and British Rail, Railroad decided to strike to in, in, increase their pension service. In, in Greece, Mrs. Diego, certain like, public workers in essential services decided to strike in order to increase their welfare, and we know what happened as a consequence of that. Now, when people of essential services decide to strike, we, th we said that causes irreversible and devastating damage. So firstly, when industry of things such as infrastructure, such as electricity or transportation decides to strike, that necessarily cause massive economical damage. Because if transportation uh, stops, or if this kind of a labor union of uh, railroad decide to like, uh, uh, strike and as a consequence of that transportation stops, for example, railway, railways or airplane, that necessarily cause trillions and billions of dollars of cost to massive uh, number of corporations within that country because they can no longer export that product or import that product. Uh, product. So even if, Mr. Speaker, the strike is temporary, once the supply line stop, it is very, very difficult to then restart that supply line, Mr. Speaker, because these corporations necessarily have to mass produce their product. So once it's stopped, it necessarily is a irreversible harm. But secondly, Mr. Speaker, like foreign, Madam Speaker, foreign corporations will hesitate to invest in domestic industry because now you create a negative precedent, Mr. Speaker. CEO of foreign corporations will start to think. Yes, infrastructure of France is attractive, but the risk of those railroad corporations striking and not providing us services is too high, so instead we will decide to invest into China. We believe, in the, especially in the context of global competition, we believe that this is devastating for the economy of this kind of country. But secondly, we say the strikes in certain essential services has tangible harm on things such as human life and well-being. Because if a firefighter decides to strike, they, they may not be able to quickly extinguish a fire leading to costs in human life. Like if a worker of an electricity corporation decides to strike, they may not be able to like prevent or solve situation of blackout, Madam Speaker, necessarily causing harm. So ultimately, why is the right to strike of these employer and essential services less important than the right of people's society to access these essential services? Firstly, in terms of quality, like and we simply say that there's no significant labor problem in the status quo. So as a consequence of that, like raising like ten percent of your salary is relatively less important than like people accessing like services of firefighters when needed. But secondly, in terms of quality, uh, quantity, man, speaker, like ultimately the quantity of the harm is too great because there's a lot of lot of people, like vast majority of people who needs these kind of essential services. And we don't think they're just in order, in order to raise the payment of certain like, like high management position in that hierarchy of labor union is justified. So Madam Speaker, ultimately, since there's more harm than good, simply we make to propose. Because there's a standard of how many hours we think it's okay to work in the day, but some jobs are more 
demanding than others. Like maybe this isn't true for trains, but I can't think of another better example, so please humor me. So maybe it's harder to drive a train than it is to sit in a computer all day. And so even though there is a standard amount of hours set by the government for you to work during the day, that's not logical for someone who drives a train. Because if they drive a train that many hours without break or without stop, they become so tired that they become less better at their job. So although government has set a standard method, it's not good for these trained employees, and they know that. They know it's bad for them, and it's bad for their job. And so the company can just say, well, it's the law, and you have to deal with it. And so they strike to show just how damaging this is, just how important their point is. That's the only method they have against the company. But we take their proposal, they don't have that, and that becomes an increased long-term danger to society because the company continues to have these longer hours for these train employees. We start getting accidents because they're not being able to get the hours of sleep that they need, or they're not getting, let's say, the health care that they need if they're working in a job where they're surrounded by dangerous chemicals or something else, and their company's not providing health care because they're not legally required to do it. And so they're looking at short-term economic costs for the company, but they're seeming to forget that the employees are absolutely necessary for the economic benefit. And if you don't have happy employees, you're not going to have a happy and productive company. This is true short-term and long-term. They are completely ignoring the actual long-term analysis of how this problem works. And so he also gave us the issue of companies not wanting to invest in new industry. We actually heard this from Sano as well. So somebody doesn't want to invest in France because they're going to worry about strike. Well, we think this is actually problematic because if the companies go against striking, they're just going to go to a country with lax labor laws, right? That means that actually proves our point that these companies are working to disadvantage their workers. They don't want to give the best for their employees to make sure their employees give back the best. They want to give the minimum possible so their employees will give the minimum possible. And we don't think that's a smart company strategy in the long run. So we'd rather not have a company invest that's going to be a crap company anyways. We'd rather have a company that's going to comply with the laws and make sure that their employees are happy. But that's not what's going to happen because they'll be able to exploit the workers in the long term if we take their proposal. And so to briefly reconstruct what my partner said, he, they're trying to characterize all, employee, all employees as just greedy and terrible. I'm sorry, wanting health care is not greedy. Wanting something a little bit above minimum wage because you live in a city where Tokyo where you can't survive on minimum wage, we don't think that's greedy. We think that's entirely logical. And so we don't see, we don't believe their characterization that everyone's greedy. Actually, and if you listen to their characterization, they only said one specific group of people is greedy. It's the people at the top of the labor unions, right? These old guys who are 50 years old. So if your problem is the structure of the labor unions and the people who are in charge of the labor unions, who according to them, are the ones who describe the strike, make a law that changes how the labor unions are run. Make a law that says the labor union has to be 50-50 OB and new employees. And so if it's the OBs who are making it so all they do is strike, then there will be a balance of power. And so their excessive strikes, if that is true, won't happen anymore. So hey, they solved their problem, and they actually have no more problem anymore because excessive strikes aren't happening, so their case falls apart, doesn't it? So he also tried to say, OK, here's the labor in the lawsuit. Well, lawsuit, I gave you cases where there are things that are legal but aren't good for specific industries, so they can't sue about that, right? Because it's legal, and so they can't sue about something that's legal. And so lawsuits can't work in every situation. And as for the media, my partner told you if you have one person going to the media, media is not necessarily going to care. It's about the uniting of voices. That's the point of the strike. Is that it's all of these workers together. So if you have one employee going and saying, yeah, my wages aren't fair and I don't like them, the media is not going to give a damn, especially in cases in this modern global society where many media corporations have relationships with companies. So TV Asahi is also a Asahi company, right? And so if Asahi's employees want to protest, we're not going to hear from Asahi about their employees being unhappy, right? So that media is a perfect outlet isn't true. And also, if employees can go to the media, the companies can go to the media too, and the companies can get lawyers too, and the companies have more money. And so we think it will be entirely possible to shut individuals down, as opposed to a group that is striking. That's much harder to shut down. So their alternatives don't work. And finally, there was this notion of, well, if they don't like it, they can just choose a different company. Yeah, if I'm a poor worker on minimum wage, it's so easy for me to quit my job and go to another company. That's ridiculous. Maybe if I'm a CEO, but not if I'm a poor level worker that you guys are talking about. So you're going to have to try again on that analysis. And so now, to go into my argument, first I want to talk about, well, I kind of gave you the scenario of things that are legal but bad. 
And so let me talk about the benefits of the company in the long term. So they're talking about, well, they're going to lose some profit and it's going to be bad. Okay. If you lose profit in the short term, but in the long term you prosper, that's not a bad thing, right? Companies take risks all the time. And that's exactly what this is, is being willing to take a risk. And so even companies can have good ideas, but implement them so that they work badly. So let's say, I don't know, Apple has this new great idea for how they're going to run their hours. And from the guy up top, whose job is very different from the guy working in the Apple store, this seems like a great idea, right? And so they implement it, and it actually doesn't go well. The employees don't like it. If they can't strike, maybe they can speak as individuals, or maybe they can speak as a labor union. But if this new guy, I don't know who's in charge of Apple now, but let's say he's a totally evil guy, and he doesn't like his employees, and he's like, well, I think this plan's great. It's my logic. I love it, and so we're sticking with it even if you don't like it, because you don't have any leverage anymore. You can't strike, but we as a company have the ability to fire you, so if you complain, we can just get rid of you, or we can reduce your salary a little bit, because you know what? If you're a poor employee working at the Apple store, a five cent deduction on your salary is actually a lot, but that's not going to seem like a lot to the average citizen, right? But it will to those employees, and so these employees are going to be left stranded with no leverage whatsoever. They're making it seem like the companies are the ones that are so weak and so poor. The companies are the ones with billions of dollars at their disposal, with media more often on their side. And so the companies have all of the benefits except right to strike, which belongs to the employees. You take that away, they have nothing. And so you're going to have unhappy employees, unhappy companies, bad for everyone in the long run. Thank you. We are not talking about factories that exist in countries like Southeast Asia or Eastern Europe. We are talking about first world nations like Japan, like the United States, where labor, labor and employment law is established and there are, there are a bunch of legal protections uh, that can protect uh, workers' conditions. And what is happening right now is that if you look at like, companies like General Motors or Japan Airlines, that there are <coughs> Their working condition is not so bad, but because workers' demand is ended, this uh, these uh, people in labor union are resorting to the right to strike, and their company's performance is damaged, and the employment of temporary workers and also workers themselves are damaged. And we want to change this situation, and this is why we are proposing this motion. Let's look at three issues in today's debate. Firstly, <coughs> Firstly, uh, is right to strike necessary in the first world today? Uh, secondly, uh, what's the impact on employment? And thirdly, what's the impact on society as a whole? So let's, uh, let's look at the necessity of the right to strike. Firstly, what we heard from the entire opposition bench is that right to strike is the only effective way against uh, corporations in order to improve the working condition. What we told you on side proposition is this is actually false. <coughs> We say that in the first world there are like much there are like various measures that can protect these workers' working condition. We told you there are like labor employment law that set the minimum wage of workers a maximum working hours. So if companies are like <coughs> if companies are forcing uh, their employees to overwork, it is actually illegal. And because we have uh, we have agency like labor relations committee, those workers can report to this committee and those uh, labor relations committee can intervene when exploitation takes place. <coughs> and the re their response was that you know companies can simply neglect like things like overworking. What we say is that, that you know 
there is no actually like very serious exploitation taking place because there is a labor law setting a minimum standard for workers. But also what they miss is, what they miss is that you know corporations clear incentive which is to improve the working condition of workers in order to maximize the performance as a corporation. Like right so if so what happens when like overworking is taking place in the company is the company's performance is obviously getting damaged because uh, workers Workers cannot uh, reproduce their working ability, and inevitably the, their performance will be reduced. And also, you know, corporations' reputation is harmed. And we told you how media has a clear incentive to report the overworking or overworking for other forms of exploitation. And this is why, you know, this is why, like in the current uh, in the current Japan, uh, you know, there is a constant media report as to how bus uh, how bus drivers are work overriding right now, and there is a constant discussion on the diet as to whether or not to legislate the legislation which 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 will improve the working condition of bus drivers. So what we say is that media mainstream media has a clear incentive to report, and their response was that you know media does not does not focus on individuals, and media will focus on groups. Our response is that. You know, what they miss is that labor unions continue to exist. So, you know, they, we, we only remove the right to strike. So, so what happens is that, you know, labor union can send out their voice to the society and send out their claims to the media as a group. So we believe that media will have a clear incentive to report. But even if, you know, even if the, uh, the power of the uh, labor union will be reduced after taking its proposal, what we have today is that, you know, Things like IP media, things like Twitter or Facebook, their constant reports uh, can you know, appeal to the society like, anonymously, and media will have a clear incentive in reporting these types of things. So what we say is that you know, corporation has a clear incentive to clear incentive to minimize the exploitation in order to maximize the profit as a corporation. And this is why like, many this is why in many cases income of corporate executives are a contingent of performance of corporations. So corporations has a clear incentive in doing so. And what they say, uh, what Dollar say is that you know corporate uh, corporation has a connection with the like, mainstream media by giving an example TV Asahi. You know, what we say is that simply workers of TV Asahi can go to different bro broadcasting yeah. they, can, they can send their voice through Twitter or other types of media. So we so we believe that uh, we, we believe the right to strike isn't necessary today. So let's look at the impact of employment. What we see as a problem or side proposition is that there is an excessive negotiation of power uh, uh, that you know, labor union has. And this is why companies like General Motors or Japan Airlines, their workers are not overworking and their workers are not being exploited at all, are like, constantly resorting to right to strike. And they, actually, those corporations are being unemployment. And, be, being uh, been bankruptcy, uh, there is a massive number of unemployment people. And we say this is actually a problem. And the reason it's happening is not because there is no. The reason it's happening isn't because like you know, labor law is a problem, but because workers' demand is endless. Obviously, everyone wants more income and, and less working hours. But this is why they are constantly have an incentive to resort to right to strike. So right to strike is currently being abused. And also, what we told you is that there is a hierarchical structure within the labor union, right? So what we see is that what we see is that there are a bunch of middle-aged, like regular workers who are in managing position of labor unions, and because their demand is endless, are constantly uh, resorting. Constantly, like you know, negotiating with corporations without threat to to go on a strike, and of course, corporations are afraid of their workers being exploited, being uh, bent on a strike. These people are hearing their was And what is happening today is that you know, temporary workers who are in a weakest position has to be laid off because corporations have to pay to pay them. Pay the, uh, more salary for work for regular workers as opposed to temporary workers who are in the most vulnerable position. They are, uh, they are, uh, who, who need protection by the society. So this is this is why we need we, we want to take this policy and remove the right to strike in order to uh, in order to maximize the workers' condition, which includes uh, temporary workers. So there will be more temporary workers coming into. 
regular progress. So we, we, we believe that this policy will actually improve parking condition as a whole. And their, their only response was that, you know, we can change the structure of labor union by law. Well, how? Right? We can yeah, change yeah. the stru structure of labor union. The structure of labor union is determined by the working age or determined by the social status. It is actually impossible, and removing right to, right to strike is the only way to change the excessive influence that yeah. labor union has. So, lastly, the impact on society. What Hakira has told you is that there are like many uh, necessary pub there are like various uh, labor unions. Or, or uh, many like public essential public services are actually going on a strike. When we look at the France, there are uh, workers of public transportation are constantly going on a strike. When we look at the Britain, the British Airways are constantly going on a strike, and they will be actually harming the people. And there is, we see a like serious problem in, in seeing like a bunch of firefighters going on a strike, and there are people who are like, being burned to death, and there is no response coming from yeah, that point. Uh, also, what we say is that this policy will actually reduce the incentive to invest in first world nations, and rather there will be instead uh, instead uh, invest in countries like China. So, for all these reasons, we are very proud of the policy. Thank you, Mr. Shimano. to talk about the transfer head straight to the three things that I'd like to say. Um, hopefully it will clarify a bit. First is the idea of we part of the problem. Is a strike so harmful that we actually need to break institutional strike in the first Second is that with regards to can the employees still be protected or the workers still be protected even without the right to strike. And third, we finally go to the idea of the company of whether the right to strike is a benefit or is, as they say, a liability in the end. So to start with, is a strike so harmful that we actually need to abolish it in the first place? The, we have to question, actually, the, the, the proposition side characteristic of the worker. So they say two things. One is that, um, actually, that the, the strike is so harmful because it hurts the company is a threat to the company in the first place, so therefore the employee also suffers in the end because of it. To the idea that the workers actually have so much power, in fact they will go into red, so um, if, because of the fact that they have overpower with regards to the ability to strike. And three, the idea of the harm when it comes to things like essential services, say electricity, car trucks, medical care, and so on and so forth. So to start with, number one, the, hurt, the fact that it hurts the company, in fact it has a negative effect on the employee in the first place, well, because of this um, link, we think that workers aren't that stupid to know that if they want the co that they this, themselves will profit if the company itself will survive. So therefore, as our first speakers already told you, there is absolutely no reason for these workers to overdo the striking process in the first place. And because of the fact that the company will definitely go bad, and if the company goes bad, then it is bad for the employee. So the example that they gave, say the GM, wherein um, they actually mentioned the fact that the GM did um, stupid um, strikes and therefore people became critical of the labor unions because um, people found it unreasonable, right? Well, 
we think that in the end, this is actually just make, this, this may be a unique case, and in the end, that this actually strengthens our own argument that people, that labor unions, will not result. It will not go into the extent of creating stupid strikes if they know that it will actually go against them in the end. As the first speaker again has mentioned, that um, these strikes are often um, as a last resort, oh, and, is, and they only do it because of the fact that it is all the more necessary in order to protect their rights. So we think that the power to strike, it actually creates a proper power balance wherein both the government, uh, both the company and the employee can actually can have a mutually beneficial relationship. Secondly, the idea that the workers have too much power, um, they will go into the red, they give example of job in Greece, and actually, never mind, because my second speaker already clearly refuted that, that often these, you know, when, when they gave the example of job, when they gave the example of Greece, the fault is not due to strike. We question the linkage of how, this, um, of how the strike caused these problems in the first place. As you, you know, there is, um, there was an economic crisis that happened, so then there are various other factors that actually resulted in these companies maybe having a hard time. We cannot see why it necessarily links to the strike in the first place. And now, they, and then they also go into the problem of, say, the essential services. They give the example of um, electricity, of fire trucks, of medical companies. So, to um to first uh, two refutations to this first if if actually according to the analyzation of the workers again if they say that these workers are so profit oriented then why is it that they choose these jobs in the first place say being a medical worker say being a firefighter we think that um there is very um that there is actually a certain amount of goodwill especially because these jobs typically do not pay well in the first place and second the idea is that. If it is so important to society, then all the more we think it is important to hear these workers' rights. Because if we do not enable them the strike, say the power to say what needs to be changed in order to improve their working conditions, then we think that maybe these people cannot be, that these people, that these firefighters, that these medical workers, these ambulance and firefighters will not able will not be able to to do their job to the best of their ability, will not be able to help the people to the best of their ability, and especially because uh, um, which, uh, especially because um, they are so important to society. So now moving on into uh, finally, they say that the actually the for some reason the now they cite this misbalance problem. They say that the problem is actually due to the fact that even though there's a strike, the benefit is limited only to those people who are powerful, those old workers, because the labor union structure is uh, is um, bad. But if that is a problem, then why is it that strikes are being criticized in the first place? We think that if you saw, then why don't you solve the structure problem? We think that the problem that they are setting, as well as the motion of abolishing strikes, are mutually exclusive problems that uh, are difficult to link together. In fact, as our second speaker have, has already clearly told you, what if we change the structure of the labor union? If the young workers can also have their say, then that you don't need to abolish the strike in the first place, right? Because that's what the problem setting seems to be from the whole proposition side. So if we set it so that the power will be shared, the problem will also be solved, then we see absolutely no problem. Now, moving on into the second clash point of with regards to can the employees actually be protected without these strikes? So the proposition side today has brought us various things. They say that company actually this is not overpowered. They give examples, say, the lawsuit, they say access to the media, they talk about labor laws and things like minimum wage, so we have standards in these first world countries, right? Again, as the second speaker has already clearly questioned the uh, logic of this, we think that just because you get minimum wage, just because you only work for a certain number of hours, every single job is unique with regards to the demands that you are putting. So we don't think that just because, okay, there's, that you cannot apply a simple blanket standard to every single job. We think that the unique concerns of each job should also be paid attention to. And the power for the labor unions to actually have a voice or a say to change their working conditions, to improve their working conditions, if the working conditions are so bad, is through the process of the strike. And we think that if you take this away, therefore, all the more that you actually that this may very well lead to a backtracking into um, the possible social um, into the social norms because if we look at um, the things that they said again, so they say their alternatives again, the lawsuit, 
Um, but our second, our second speaker has really clearly refuted this with the idea of the money difference, the power difference between the company and that single employee, and the fact that a strike is a united front against the company, and it's all the more effective. And second, with regards to the access of the media, this was also in criticism and a downward to um, a, a dive in reputation. But the media is not, um, um, as we, uh, although we agree that public attention is good, we still, and in fact it is often used in strike, we don't necessarily, as we pointed out before, because the power imbalance can still exist, that it's, um, or if, say, the, comp uh, the media itself is, comp is maybe funded by the company, that it may not always be appropriate for that company, uh, for that media to be the power or the voice of the company. In fact, um, it does, because of the fact that as well, that the media does not have the unique benefit of or the actual impact of the strike, wherein the workers themselves stop work, wherein they can actually harm the profit of the company, and that um, this will, and the visual impact of this united front of workers saying that we are being harmed and we cannot stand for this. So in the end, we think that, um, that it, in order to actually uh, uh, maintain this power balance, we can we need cannot take this proposal. Excuse me. Then the greedy OBs, which they characterize are apparently the only bad employees in this situation, 
have a balance of power with the younger workers who aren't so crazy, so then we don't have stupid strikes. We only have strikes that are absolutely essential. So their entire problem based on that one scenario falls to the ground. And so finally, benefits and harms in the after plan. Benefits, harms to the employee, they just said, well, you know, if they're not going to have their job, it's going to be bad. We say they need bargaining power. We say they need to be able to improve their jobs in ways that they can't do under the status quo because of legal ramifications and other ways that won't work. In terms of benefit to the company, again, as we told you, they're only looking at short term. They're going to lose some short term profit or maybe, and, but we told you long term. If you have happy employees with better conditions, then you're going to have a better company in the long run. And so that's going to benefit the company overall, even if they have to suffer a little bit. It's something that they have to deal with. And sometimes the only way you know you need to change is when you get slapped in the face with it. And finally, the benefit to society. They try to give you the harm of losing essential services, but if your fireman can't sleep properly because he works too many hours, you're not going to be getting good fire service anyway. So we think it's short-term, long-term, long-term wins. Thank you. Now, speak out all these negative aspects in the sustain, the sustain, the sustain, without engaging significantly engaging with the problem we set up in today's debate, as is right to strike leads to this leads to this devastating effect on the economy we have in our society. We think on this side of the house, that's what we, we are not saying that there is not. Uh, we think this their analysis was simplistic when they didn't compare the harm which has been brought up by the right to strike in these instances. I'm going to clarify on two issues. Firstly, what's going to be the harm by right to strike on our side? Secondly, whether it is, whether it, whether it is an, whether it a clear necessity for us to maintain right to strike. So firstly, harm of right to strike. We gave you three concrete, <coughs> tangible harm. By, by right to strike. First, what we pointed out is the company will lose the lose the profit by, by giving them, for example, this higher higher social revenue or a higher salary. That's not necessarily the company has to have a layoff and go bankrupt. This is the case of the GM, this is the case of okay, of job. We the only response we got we, we got on their side of the house is that where is that where people don't do that. If people are not stupid, if people will not want to be labeled, that's why people will avoid that. What we told you from the first speaker in this back is that people can't avoid that because this labor union is structurally in favor of the elderly in this instance. Not in favor of the vulnerable workers in, uh, workers in the labor union, but in favor of the elderly, right? That means elderly don't lose their own job, even if there is a layoff, if in, in, their, in their own manager, Mr. Speaker. That's what we told you in the house. Only re real response we got on the side of the house was that we changed the law. How, Madam Speaker, when we told on the side of the house, this structure comes from the difference of the social status and comes from this structural imbalance between the elderly managers and the young, young workers, Madam Speaker. There is no explanation at all how they can solve the problem we set up in today's event. That's the first harm of the, of the layoff of the company and the huge common society stands in today's event. Second only point that which was different by the side of the house, the company will, will fire will fire the temporary workers in the, in these instances because they have to maintain their own workers. So it is a huge problem in Japan when this entire temporary worker is cut off and their job is lost and their their, their entire salary is lost. As they got temporary getting up, but there is no response in the other house. The other one we point out is that there is a public, there is a home on essential public, public service, Madam Speaker. If there is no police officer in, in, in your in your life and there is a criminal who are going to rape you. We think this is a clear harm on, 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 on the social security issue. Only resource we got from the KC was like, the case people are a very good person, like KC. But what, what, why does that respond to our factual analysis is that in Britain there is a huge amount of the huge amount of right to strike, there's a huge amount of the France, for example, a huge amount of, 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 of the strike of the firework in France. They have never engaged or the factual analysis we gave you from the public event. But this problem still exists, a harm still exists. Whether there is a necessity for, for second issue of the, of the necessity for us to maintain right to strike, we told you three things why, why, why this is not enough, why this right to strike is not necessary. First, we pointed out that so without having this right to strike, we can gather the media attention, media attention in, the, in this instance. Just as Nike got attention, just as bus drivers' company get attention okay. after this exploitation. This, the, the people have general, general incentives, they have an attention on the media about the, about, 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 about the, about the, about the labor issues. But only something called was like there might be a connection between the media and the media, media and the company. But what we told there are different different medias, different in these instances, 
If they are doing a no responding, the all factual analysis, there is a clear case study immediately you can get. Second important is there is a labor law, right? They said it will take a long time. But the Shimano responded to that by saying there is there is there is a labor relations committee without having a lawsuit laws by this individual. The labor law labor committee can intervene in this company and fix the situation. We have no response on this side of the house. Flat Min told you as they have admitted. If you exploit furthermore, this will decrease the entire productivity of the company. If they say it hurts the company's profit, the company will do that if this company is so profitable as the negative has conceded. So, Nana Speaker, because they have given a many analysis to only have been It was a significant level of engagement on the negative That's the reason we think it's bad. Thank you.